So this is the Sony A6000 and these are the two kit lenses that come with the camera. But are they any good? Now, I did film this exact same video about seven months ago. However, it was one of my first videos. I did film it at my table. The audio was horrible and I barely gave examples. So I'm gonna do it properly this time. This camera is the entry into the mirrorless range for Sony, so naturally it comes with entry kit lenses. Kit lenses are not known for their quality. There are so many lenses better than these, however those can be very expensive and we aren't here to talk about those. We're here to talk about these. The two kit lenses that came with my A6000 were the 16 to 50 and the 55 to 210. These two lenses cover you from 16, which is pretty wide, to 210, which is quite well zoomed in. That's a really good base to have, especially when you're just starting out. Now, when I speak about there being better lenses than these and that these are kind of beginner lenses, please don't think that I am saying that these are useless and that you should just get rid of them immediately. These lenses can both be used to complement your range of lenses down the line and are especially useful if you are just starting out with YouTube or filming and or just starting out with photography. I wouldn't recommend you stick with these if you are more advanced in photography or are earning from it. They can be useful, but again, I would rather upgrade in that case. But however, again, if you are just starting out, especially in YouTube, these are perfect. Well, there's more so than this. The 16 to 50 <clears throat> is really good and really wide. So you could get a really nice big open shot like this. So you can get yourself fully in the frame, nice and wide. Whereas this, if you want to look at something far away. So not really for YouTube. So these are both OSS lenses, meaning optical steady shot which means that they have a built-in stabilization, so your filming and shooting will be a lot well, smoother, stabilized, and less shaky. You will still want to stabilize in post just to get that proper smoothness. The 16-50 to has an aperture range of 3.5 to 5.6, and the 55-210 to has an aperture range of 4.5 to 6.3. So these are not bokeh beasts by any means. You can still get good bokeh by having something out of focus in the foreground though. It also means you might find yourself having to use a higher ISO for certain scenarios as a 4.5 will let in a lot less light as 1.8 for example. So you, depending on uh, how new you are to photography or how, depending on your style, this may not be a problem. So both of these lenses are actually really well built and feel really nice. Like they're not super light or shaky. 16 and 50 is a bit shaky. It's a bit of rattling in there. 55 to 210 is sturdy. This thing's sturdy, you know. Nothing really rattling inside, it's heavy, it feels nice, it feels comfy, it feels like a nice proper lens, it's good. I really like the quality on that. It feels a bit more plasticky. It's not the same quality, it's not bad, it's pretty good. I, I like that. Let's look at each lens. The 16 and 50 is really compact and light, so it is really easy to store when you're on the move. So this lens has power zoom, so you can push here and it can zoom in and out really smoothly. This gets you from this range to this range which are both really nice and wide for scenery. Honestly, with the OSS and how light and wide this lens is, it is really perfect for vlogging and can also be really useful for B-roll when you want to get those wide scenic shots. So I did personally use this lens quite a lot for photography, especially in the beginning. I would say it's better suited for video, personally. The 55 to 210 is quite different. This lens has no power zoom, is a lot longer and a lot heavier. Now, I definitely wouldn't recommend vlogging with this one. The 55 to 210 gets you from this to this, which is a really nice zoom range and is really good for when you want to focus on a subject without distractions or for when something is far away. So this lens for me came with the sun guard, which is really nice to have, protects the lens there and of course gets the sun out of your shots and it looks pretty cool. So depending on the type of videos you're making, I would much say this is preferred or suited to photography. I wouldn't particularly record things in this again unless things are super far away and you want to get a nice video of it. Focus on it, really looking really nice. Keep this for photography. So this is actually a really solid lens. The quality is really good and I feel like I got a lot out of this lens and I'm really proud of a lot of the images I got from it and I used it a lot. And uh, yeah, the 210 is a really nice zoom range to have before getting a telephoto lens. So it's honestly, it's, it's, it's really nice. Before spending a lot of money, it's good. It, it, it's good for its price. Now that we know about the lenses, let's talk about the camera. As I've mentioned, both the camera and the 16-50 lens are really well suited to vlogging. 
slap a little grip on there and a microphone and you have a really nice little setup. Um, it's really light and it looks cool too. Oh, so there's no actual audio input port on this camera so you will have to record your audio externally or get an extension. So for me personally, the biggest downside to this camera is that it cannot record in 4K. The best you're going to get is 1080 60. This is not an issue for a lot of people though, and you can still get some amazing video quality with this camera. So again, it's not an issue for everyone. If 4K is an issue and you do really need it, I would recommend the Sony ZV-E10. And there are other alternatives from other brands like Canon, but let's be real for you, how are you looking at Sony? Now, just because I keep bringing up video and vlogging doesn't mean that I don't think this is good for photography. I think this is amazing for photography and I love this for photography. This camera has a 24.3 megapixel sensor, which is honestly really good. So you're really covered for your quality. Uh, it is an APS-C sensor, which means it's a lot smaller than full, full frame, but honestly, still amazing quality. This isn't a big deal. A lot of people love using APS-C. It's not a thing. Like, it's a thing, but it's not a thing. Like, don't, don't stress about that. This camera also has 11 frames per second continuous shooting, so it's fast. It's real fast. Again, I rate this camera so highly. I am so fond of this little baby. My first proper camera. I can't suggest and recommend it enough. It is still amazing to this day. I still keep it with me as my backup camera to this day and I still like to use it. It is honestly really fun and so easy to learn on and use. I love this thing. I am so proud of a lot of the photos I got on this. I even shot a wedding with this. Coming back to video and vlogging, I know I keep talking about this, I'm sorry. It is just so prevalent in today's times and people's use for this camera. The LCD screen is a tilt screen only. It, that's about all it can do, just that. It's not, not a lot. It doesn't flip out, which is so desirable, especially if you are filming yourself. Not the biggest issue for me, honestly. Sometimes I'll connect to my phone to see if I'm in focus on my camera and to see what I'm shooting by Bluetooth. Not the biggest issue. Would prefer to have an LCD flip out. If that is what you want or need, ZV E10 again, great camera. So to sum up everything, this camera is more than capable, it is a beast, and these lenses cover you for a really good wide variety, especially when you're starting out. So don't just rush to get rid of them or think they're terrible. They are good, you can get a lot out of them. Again, if you do have the cash, I would recommend upgrading in the long run. But these little babies, where is this other one? It was safety protected, don't worry. These babies are amazing. Uh, I love them, uh, especially this. Uh, I love using this, and it is, it's good quality, guys. It's good quality. Okay, so enough of me just blabbing on about these lenses and camera. Uh, here are some photos and examples of photos I took with these lenses and camera. Anyways, bye.